Good morning. Welcome to the mission. Welcome to Mission Control Houston. I'm NASA Shanique Marine, and we're bringing you live coverage today of the 247th Spacewalk in support of International Space Station Assembly, Maintenance, and Upgrades. Today, NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Rashachari will conduct a spacewalk at the International Space Station to assemble and install brackets and truss kits for upcoming solar array upgrades. The new ISS rollout solar arrays, or IROSAs, will increase the space station's total available power. So far, two of six IROSAs have been deployed on the station with four additional arrays to be delivered. U.S. Spacewalk number 79 will begin at the Quest airlock. U.S. astronaut Kayla Barron, Navy 1, denoted by the red stripes, will egress first and receive a very large IROSA mod kit strut bag. U.S. astronaut Raja Chari in the plain white suit will egress second with a crew lock bag. After quick buddy checks, EV-1 will head up to Phase 1 and out to the S-4 Integrated Equipment Assembly, pausing momentarily to drop her Fairlead green hook just inboard of the solar alpha rotary joint and then continue her translation out to the S-4 3-Alpha Integrated Equipment Assembly where she will stow the large Arosa mod kit strut bag and prep for the building of the upper triangle of the mod kit. Meanwhile, EV-2 will follow EV-1 up to Phase 1. EV-2 will stop at the starboard seat cart where he will temp stow a crew lock bag of tools and retrieve a foot restraint and a worksite interface extender known as a WIFAC and then translate outboard, pausing momentarily to drop his fairly green hood just inboard of the solar alpha rotary joint. Continuing outboard, EV-2 will cross over to the radiator side of the IEA and stow the foot restraint and the worksite interface extender into the worksite interface number 26. EV-2 will then set up the foot restraint for optimum Arosa mod kit upper triangle installation and then translate over to join EV-1 to begin assembling the upper triangle. EV-1 and EV-2 will work together to build the upper triangle. The crew will build the triangular segment loosely and then will tighten up the structure by driving the bolts to torque. EV-2 will then translate over to and ingress the foot restraint. EV-1 will reposition for the handoff and EV-1 will hand off the upper triangle to EV-2. EV-2 will lay back and work to soft dock the segment onto the beta gimbal assembly and then drive four bolts. EV-1 will temp stow her PGT with a short socket on a local handrail, while EV-2 will egress the foot restraint and bias it to the left hand side. EV-1 will go over to the bag and retrieve the left mid strut and work to pass this off to EV-2 for a body restraint tether stow. EV-2 will then re-ingress the foot restraint while EV-1 retrieves the long eight foot lower strut from the bag and hands it to EV-2. While EV-2 holds the long lower strut, EV-1 will reposition to the solar array blanket box or SOB for the install of the left lower strut. As a team, the crew will move the strut into position and EV-1 will begin driving this bolt by hand four turns. EV-2 will then work to align and drive his bolt on the mounting bracket side two turns. And then EV-1 will work to complete the torque on this bolt by driving with the pistol grip tool to a high torque and then following with an even higher torque on the torque rent. Once the bolt is deemed good, EV-2 will be given a go to drive his bolts to torque using the pistol grip tool. And this completes our minimum config. EV-1 will reposition to the beta gimbal assembly and EV-2 will hand off the telescoping mid for install. EV-1 will work to soft dock the side pad onto the BGA, while EV-2 holds his clevis bolt side in place. EV-1 will start her four bolt two turns with the pistol grip tool, and then EV-2 will drive his clevis bolt to torque on the mounting bracket. EV-1 will then complete her four bolts with her pistol grip tool, and then EV-2 will drive his bolt to torque. EV-2 will then egress and reposition the foot restraint to bias it to the right hand side, the mod kit. The crew will then repeat the handoff sequence first, the mid strut for body restraint tether stow, foot restraint ingress, followed by handoff of the very long lower right strut. EV-1 will then reposition to the right hand side of the 3 alpha beta gimbal assembly and an analogous install on strategy will unfold. 
CV1 will position at the right soft bearing for lower strut install and drive the lower strut bolt to torque. EV1 will drive his clevis bolt to the mounting bracket. EV1 will then reposition at the BGA and they will hand off the right telescoping mid strut following the same install strategy. Once complete, EV1 will translate onto the mid strut and drive two collar bolts to torque to lock out the telescoping mechanism and rigidize the right hand side. EV2 will then egress the foot restraint and begin to clean up. Once the multi-layer installation, or MLI, is fully closed and wire tied down, EV1 will reposition to repeat the collar bolt and MLI ops on the left hand side. EV2 will then translate around the integrated equipment assembly and stow the tools back in the bag. He'll then fold it in up to third for ready for translation in later in the EVA. EV2 will then translate back around the IEA to the foot restraint and work to stow the foot restraint and the worksite interface extender on his body restraint tether. EV1, in the meanwhile, will translate over to the non-radiator side of the IEA to take some still imagery of the completed mod kit. EV1 will then translate out to S6 to our battery charge discharge unit. She will begin installing some wire ties on a handrail and prep for restraining the MLI or multi-layer insulation that covers the battery charge discharge unit. Meanwhile, EV2 will translate out to the starboard CETA cart to stow the foot restraint and worksite interface extender low profile on the starboard CETA cart. EV2 will then retrieve the crew lock bag onto his body restraint tether and head back out to S6 to join EV1. Both crew will work together to open the multi-layer insulation covering the battery charge discharge units. This will allow for robotic access when needed in the future. They'll perform some on-orbit origami, port it to the shape of a triangle, and restrain it out with a wire tie to a local handrail. The crew will then work to brake torque first on H1 followed by H2 and then restrain the other MLI back to open and expose the second battery charge discharge unit and then work to brake torque and reinstall to a known lower torque on the second battery charge discharge unit. Both crew then will clean up and retrieve the crew lock bag to the BRT or body restraint tether and begin to head inboard for the completion of the EVA. EV2 will lead the way in since he led with second outboard, translate across the IEA, retrieve his fair lead green hook, translate under the MT and at the CETA handrail bridge, translate Nader down to our airlock. EV1, in the meanwhile, will translate to the S4 IEA, retrieve the folded up mod kit bag, grab her fair lead green hook, translate past the CETA carts, hitting those brake pedals down the CETA handrail bridge and to the airlock, concluding a very successful US spacewalk number 79. The spacesuits you see the duo wearing are the EMUs or extravehicular mobility units, which are essentially a mini life support system providing environmental protection, mobility, and communications for the crew members during their spacewalk.
Later today in coverage, we'll have a special guest with us, Laura Kearney. Laura is the program manager for the newly created Extravehicular Activity and Human Surface Mobility Program. Laura will tell us a little bit about the future of spacesuits and how they'll affect Artemis missions. We are currently seeing Rasha Chari being fitted with his safer, and he will be next to move into the crew lock portion of the airlock. And we now have confirmation that thermal cover is now open. Baron and Chari working to egress the space station. And you can now see on the top of your screen, Baron is now out of the space station. Baron is EV-1. My anchor hook is attached to the board airlock steering gate closed tether lock black on black. I have a good safety tether pass. And I'm gonna work on Raja's anchor hook. Copy and Raja is going to the active. This work on reposition my FD. I got the snag, I think I'm the way out. Make sure I can get to that later. So your anchor hook is attached to the airlock aft steering. Gate closed, slider locked, black on black. When ready, you have a go to release your waist tether. Copy. I've got a go to release my waist tether. Let me fix the FCU here first, and I'll work on that. Okay, copy that. And Kayla, please turn on your HECA. That's going to work. It's on green light. Copy. Thank you. And when you two are ready, Raja, I hear that you're uh, working with the SCU, and then you and Kayla can coordinate transferring out the strut bag. Okay, I've got my VRT red on it. Um, two options, Raja. If you can reach the red, you can remove it now. Otherwise, let's bring it out another foot or so, and I'll take it off. Uh, I can't get to this on the other side. Okay. Uh, I, can I can bring it out more. Let's bring it out more. Airlock threats removed and coming okay. back. I saw it come back to retraction. Okay, Roger, now I'm going to um, reposition myself a little bit, but I've got the bag in my hand. Thank you, Tom. And I'm going to work on getting it on my VRT here. Still sort of in the hatch. I've got it on my BRT, so I'm going to pull it the rest of the way out. Teamwork makes the dream work. Nice job working together, you two, to get EV3 out of the hatch there. And uh, Roger, I heard you grab. Yeah, I heard that you grabbed your waist tether off that D-ring extender. So the next thing you're going to do is wait for Kayla to give you a go to egress and then retrieve crew lock bag one. Okay. 
Yeah, and I've got flag one already on my BRT rat, and I'm working on stowing the uh, all end of the large swallow that was stowed onto the uh, B rat center. And while you're still on set, okay, I'll see if I can get the, rat, the set bag rat down to this. Yeah. I'm going to change the orientation on my BRT in the jaws just because it doesn't quite want to stay where I want it. And work on getting it off to my side. Okay, if I come out partly with my legs, yep, you're, you're going to come out, Roger. Big bag. Okay, and I have the small ret uh, that was holding the step bag that's also attached to the airlock view ring center for when you come back. Okay. And Roger, on your way out, mm -hmm. there's a depress, repress key card that's kind of thrown behind the hatch. You have to turn around. I don't know if you're able to. Sorry, um, yaw around. Could come out to your waist. Oh, I think I see it. Yeah, if you could see that back in, probably shouldn't have even had it out. If not, we can get it at the end of the EVA, but probably be good to check it back in. And the sun's coming out, Roger, if you want to put your visor down. Okay, thanks. I'm going to increase my cooling a little bit. Wait for the crew left side to come back. And Charlie is now out of the hatch. Baron EV1 or extra vehicular crew member one no is wearing the suit with the red stripes. Chari is EV2 and he's wearing the suit with no stripes. Another way to keep track of the crew members today will be by their helmet cams. Baron has helmet cam number 22 and Chari Char has helmet cam number 16. You let me know when you feel like you're ready for buddy checks, Roger, and Ike, let us know if you're back with us. Yep, I'm with you, and uh, once, Roger, when you're done with the bag and you have a free finger, you can turn on your HECA. Okay. I and Kayla. thermal cover is closed. Copy, thermal cover closed, thank you. And uh, let's see, can you verify the stiffener D-ring strap is not over the magnet? Arm it up the toolboxes. And Kayla, we'd like you to fair lead at the base of the CETA spur. I copy that. Gonna take it nice and slow with the big bag. Yep. Yeah, that's right, Kayla. Slow and I'm steady wind through. Perfect. And I've got a couple of cautions I'll read to you all. Avoid contact with the radiators and flex hoses. Uh, it'll probably be obvious and self-correcting, but translate slowly, uh, especially with the strut bag on the BRT and avoid inadvertent contact with the deployed test cables. Okay. I've got that fair lead in and I'm having that to put in my adjustable fair lead. Copy, and that'll be at uh, S0 handrail 3410 for EV1. And EV2, you're gonna do an adjustable at 3409. -er. I see 3410, I'll stop here to get that. Um, adjustable down. I've got my adjustable fairly on three four one zero. 
Why did you have a go to start translating up and I'll okay. kind of keep an eye on you and come by the toolboxes and then I'll continue? Okay, I'll come off the wagon wheel. I can see your tether. Baron and Charlie are currently translating to the Starboard Trust S4 worksite where they will install a solar array modifica modification kit. The starboard seat of heart, or correction port seat of heart, and rotate it underneath it. Nice job. You're looking good. That strut bag is fine formation with you. Thanks, Roger. And you're heading to the starboard seat of cart to stow the crew lock bag. And I'm starting under the MT. I got good visibility on the bag, and it's clear. RC3060. That is your green hook location. And I think I'm caught up on something, so I'm just going to take a look at my feathers. I got it clear. Yeah, I'm the uh, cut it up on the MT. I've got a VRT rep to the APFR, which is a uh, box on the WIF X, and the WIF X is in by VRT with the gate closed. Okay, copy that, Roger. And now you're going to translate to the starboard Sarge, and you're going to also, uh, near Kayla's green hook, you're going to drop your green hook just seen at the PERS on handrail 3061. Okay, 3061. And we currently see Russia. One of the corner adjustables down. I'll work on the other one. Copy adjustable on one corner. We currently have. You'll hear some acronyms today. You, I'm sure you've heard BRT. Before I do the Golf 5, uh, I can think of maybe I'll set up the APFR settings just so it's easier to, get, to reach it. Okay, copy that. Uh, settings 12, Tango Tango, Fox 12. Okay, 12 is set. I got M13 and 14 hand started. Okay, copy, M13 and 14. Four turns. Uh, we're looking for four turns, and I've got PGT settings. That actually, you've already hand-started them, so next you're going to retrieve the left upper strut from the bag, and that's the uh, one on the right side, straps three and four.
you'll hear acronyms today, just like spoken previously. Rajachari mentioned his APFR, or Articulating Portable Foot Restraint, that will help him during the assembly today. The crew is at the proper work site and are starting the 3A upper bracket build. And uh, Roger and Kayla, I've got a, a warning for you here just about the uh, strut builds. The misaligned or fractured pit pin spring may present a sharp edge. Uh, inspect pit pins before actuating, please. Roger. Copy. Looking for about 21 more turns, drive that one to torque. Currently seeing views of Kayla Barron using that pistol grip tool. They'll be using it throughout today's spacewalk. And that is essentially a space drill that is used to help secure and release bolts during the spacewalk. And then we can move over to help Kayla out building the triangle. Okay. Go ahead, hit it again. Red light, low torque, and that was okay. Okay, now I got a green light. One eight decimal three on the torque, and that was zero additional turns. And can we get the initial uh, turn count and the black line? Black line flush. Yeah, I inserted it four turns, and then we got two zero additional turns for a total of 24. Copy, 20 additional for a total of 24. Green light, black line flush on M15. Uh, 5.3 turns on M8, good green light, 3.6. Copy, 5.3 additional turns for 7.3 total green light on M8. M6, 5.3 turns, good green light, 3.8. M6, 5.3, green light. And M7, 5.1 turns, green light 3.7. Copy, 5.1 additional for 7.1 total on M7 with a green light. That's a good M5 through 8. Okay, Roger, now you're going to transfer the long PGT with the be set to clockwise and 60 foot-pounds. This is the untaped torque wrench. And we're looking for about one turn, and we want the torque wrench to break over twice. And confirm I can take the locking pin out of it and start extending it. 
Okay, yeah, you can release the middle grounding pit pin from the lock position. It's opposite the handrail. Uh, and then you can extend the mid strut with the side pad towards Kayla. I'm ready, Grinder. I got my BRT down. The crew has now completed the left struts and are moving on to the right struts for the 3A installation. If you're just joining us, we're two hours and 12 minutes into the EBA where the crew has gone to the 3A work site and has built an upper bracket build as well as completed the center pass to mass canister install. And we have now completed the left struts and now on to the right for the 3A power channel. And get to about. It's kind of oscillatory, like I come that way and then I throw momentum when you say come back the other direction. But I'll grab it onto the uh, mounting bracket. I can't hold myself too far that direction. And I found there's a triangle here. I can see it coming towards me. Wish I was taller. <laughs> Actually, taller, taller may not help in this situation. Got it? I've got fingers on it. Okay, I've got uh, contact. I've got control. Let me get a red on it, and then I'll send it back towards you to get the other red off. Nice job. And you want to red to the stanchion closest to the side pad. There's me. Yeah, Raja, it looks like to me like you can probably reach the bag rat, and that might be easier if you feel okay. like you can get it with your left hand. Yep, I can do that. Turns on M26 with a green light, 25 decimal four, but I'm still seeing. I don't know if this is still a check, but that tab is so wiggly, and it didn't look like it really closed up on the M26 side. Copy. Uh, not concerned about the tab, but we got four turns and a green light on M26. Stand by. We're talking it over. It looks symmetric with the other side. Turns okay, that might have been uh, parallax for me. Roger's saying the gap looks parallel. Well, Toppy, thanks for those words. The gap is parallel. Okay, we're going to continue. And so, uh, Kayla, we're going to have you ratchet with the PGT. And we're going to set it to ratchet clockwise. Check the MTL to 30.5. And then ratchet clockwise and MCL in 30.5. Okay, we're going to uh, manually ratchet M25 and 26 to torque. We're looking for two pops on each one. Okay. Figure out my best body position here. Is it Copy. challenging? It is, and uh, you, you know, holding the very top over the display with one hand and the bottom underneath the battery is one great position, and you can also counter the torque doing that if you're able to reach it that way. We are a minute 45 from a handover. All right, I just have a hard time getting the pitch out to move now to get the, on the APFR. Do you need the tool grinder? Uh, I got the four. Okay. I just have the TVA bag open right now. Okay, copy that grinder, and uh, you know it helps to not if you're if you don't have any pitch load on it, right? You know what I mean. If you're trying to pitch it while you're trying to push the pitch knob, that'll put some some side load on it, make it a little harder. I got the ratchet on my mini workstation. The TVA bag is closed. Copy EV1 ratchet on your workstation, and the TVA bag closed. Nice work. Okay, we're setting up for the BCU, excuse me, BCDU MLI tieback. Uh, you guys are doing great. About an hour ahead of timeline, um, and so uh, for EV1, when you two are ready, you can translate to the S6 BCDU. Translating outboard on the non-radiator side to S6 handrail 2008. And Raja, if you want to wait to get those APFR settings. 
and pass my green hook. Okay, then once you're both back inboard of the uh, Sarge, uh, you can uh, find a place to temp stow your bags. And which uh, mile marker did you say I'm looking for? 5730. Okay. Kayla is going to translate to the S3 trust beam. Now five hours and 32 minutes into today's spacewalk, recapping some of the milestones at 7.12 a.m. Central Time, 8.12 a.m. Eastern Time, NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Raja Chari turned their suits on to battery power, marking the official start of today's spacewalk. They, are, they then translated to the starboard fortress worksite where they successfully installed a 3A modification kit for future IROSA or ISS rollout solar array upgrades. They then completed multi-layer insulation tiebacks and began to work on get aheads at the 3A integrated assembly, integrated electronics assembly. They completed this task and now are heading, translating to the AMS or Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer for patch panel access evaluations. Near 5370 is where you tip the crew lock bag. We'll have to use that I beam. So yep, you're probably right, but I can get over to that from here. Two times. I think I want to come towards you on this diagonal piece, right? And then there's a small handrail after you cross the next gap. And try to slow your rate a little. And nice so job, both of you. Useless. And we're going to hold before we ingress the AMS worksite. So we're going to hold uh, here shortly. Let me get local down. I rotate, so I'm facing port position. Uh, yes. And there's stop rotating at any point. Your helmet just barely kissing the MOI. You're good. Okay. And there's another short handrail on the off side of that same beam, a little to your right. Okay. Before I rotate, let me get a local down. I'm just realizing there's nothing for me to stop my momentum. Yeah. Local and your end effector yeah. might be good. And uh, watch your foot okay. as you, as if, your, if your feet kick up, your foot, the back of your foot is safer to contact the bottom of AMS. You keep your feet down. Can I rotate them? Um, I wanted us to stand okay. by, I think. All right, I'll stay here. Hey, firm, we're going to hold here. Thank you. Yeah, and just in general, so when we uh, get in there and start looking around, we've got some time here to hold or coordinate exercise constraints. Uh, but just big picture before we get in there, main thing that I'm thinking about this whole time is you not getting stuck. So uh, as we move in, we want to make sure that we can get back out uh, and there's a quite a few no-touch things in there. I think you have a picture in your cuff. All of it is covered by white MLI, so it all looks the same. Uh, and some of them are things we can lightly touch, and some are absolute no-touches. And so let's just go real slow and real steady uh, so we don't hurt AMS. I, mean, I think in this position I can see that ACC cable up there above my left shoulder. Um, yep. Your helmet, you need to go a little later. Okay. Right now your helmet's in contact with something. Is that better? Yep. Good. And now if you want to roll onto your side. And I don't know if you want to go grab that next handrail. 
not. I think the panel you're trying to get to is further inboard. It is, yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to turn so I'm perpendicular, so I'm facing port, though. I would maybe face the truss for now, translate inboard, and then rotate, and then rotate inside. Are we good to do that? Are we, are, are we still waiting, or are you guys ready for us to move? Hey, firm, we're still waiting, so keep doing recce. What you're doing is great. Uh, if you see it in my picture, it's dead center uh, on that side near the flat uh, piece that's off to your to, toward your back. But it is a very small, narrow, okay. looks like one single yeah. cable. That's the ACC cable. I see the patch. I think we're the area where the patch panel should be. Copy. Yeah, we're standing by here just shortly, and we actually are now go, so we are able to continue. And so, uh, Kayla, over to you. Uh, you can GCA Raja into the worksite, and then when you both are comfortable, Raja, you can ingress the gap under AMS. Go to inboard, Raja. Okay. I'll try to stay as late as I can. If you're just joining us, we're five hours and 43 minutes in today's spacewalk where Kayla Barron and Rasha Chari successfully installed the 3A modification kit and completed tieback multi-layer insulation on spare battery charge discharge units to support re robotic replacement or relocations. They had time left and proceeded with the kit ahead task. They have also completed breaking torque and resetting bolts on spare battery charge. Oh, excuse me. They have also completed breaking torque and resetting bolts on multiple orbital replacement units stored on the 3A integrated electronics assembly on the S4 truss. They have just arrived to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer worksite where they will do patch panel access evaluation. We have a go. I'm going to be just neater of your handrail. Okay, I see you. I don't have anywhere further to go, unfortunately. <laughs> if I want to lay on your side and manage my body position. That's what I'm doing. Sure. All right, let me get my pop on you. I just, um, could I put a local on your handrail? Yeah. Yep. Okay, thanks. I'm going to do the same. Yep, I'm going to get a local down. minutes to a handover. Green hooks picked up. Let's start heading back towards my crew lock bag. All right, nice job, Roger. And when you get a chance, we need a safer handle check from you. And, and Bob, I think I just looped around my... Make sure it's a good thing. Got my green hook up. Copy both green hooks retrieved. I'm trying to keep the kill. Let's try to stand my side here. I'll get you my safer handle check when I get back to the bag location. Sounds good. Roger, you let me know when I'm good to come back up. Uh, you should be good to move now. I'm stuck on the strut bag here, I'm trying to get on your side. Yeah, you're, you're good to move up. If you hold there for a little bit so I can get my bag, the large tethers don't cross. Okay. 
And I work. I would like to confirm to you that my right waist tether large hook is on the airlock D-ring extender. It is locked. I have a good load pass through my right waist tether. Copy. With your right waist tether, that is a good config for both EV crew members. Okay. I can try. Roger. Why don't you, if you can reach the a little higher. You need me to get a little higher? No, no. Uh, we're fine. I'm okay. trying to get my reels out of the way, but I can get the bundle behind them. Okay. I can take the bundle. Sorry. It's okay. As the astronauts enter the crew look portion of the air. Good uh, load pass through my waist tether. I'm going to pick up my anchor hook. You agree? We are go. As the astronauts enter the crew lock portion of the Quest air lock. With you on two. I'll try to clear out of your way here. Alex, it's Mark. Uh, Tom, and you and okay now do a stiff test. The stiff test came up negative. Let's say again, Hello? negative. He's about to get his CSA Hold on. I can do it. I just need to get the tether. Copy that, and we will wait for the CSA CT reading. Okay, we got all zeros on the CSA CT. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, uh, if you want to pass the torch, you can get a red on it. Thank you, sir. I've got a red on it. You're going to release my BRT red if you can. It's on the handrail. Right. Mark, we yep. copy all zeros on the CSA CP reading. That's the good news. We're back calling back this a false fire. Right. Copy false fire. And uh, second reading was all zeros as well. And I take it that means there's no corrections. Right, I'm going to try to slide up out of your way here. Okay. Take one for you. There are no additional and I'm corrections. I'm going to do a heads up ingress. Yeah, copy. Copy, thanks. I'm over the UIA. And should be on your way here. That is amazing to hear. And I know you are the new program manager for the new program, EVA and HSM, or the Human Surface Mobility Program. What are the importance of this for the Artemis, Artemis missions? Yeah, so our new program, we're very, very new. We just uh, were formed and established here in January, so the team is just setting up, but our um, we have a couple of goals. Um, one of our goals is to make sure that we have consistency in our EVA capability across uh, ISS and the Artemis campaigns. Um, but then for the Artemis missions on the lunar surface, we're looking at a really integrated set of mobility capabilities. So the astronauts' ability to move move away from the lander while they're suited, either in a non-pressurized rover that we call the Lunar Terrain Vehicle or the LTV, or a pressurized rover. Um, so bringing those elements all together under one program gives us a lot of advantages. Um, we get to develop those systems synergistically, making sure the requirements um, are are met and allocated across the systems so that when we do get to the South Pole, um, we have a really well integrated, highly functioning system, set of lunar surface systems for the crews to be able to explore the lunar surface. And that is some great goals, and I know we're heading towards Artemis missions here soon. So is there anything else we need to know about the future of spacesuits? I just think it's a really exciting time. Uh, we are in the process right now of evaluating proposals for our new suits. So we're looking forward to um, awarding that contract here in the next couple of months and um, getting our new vendor or vendors on board with us so we can start working with them. Um, we are hoping to have our new suit transitioned on the space station towards the end of 2025. And then of course we're looking at uh, the new suit on the lunar surface for Artemis 3, also in the 2025 timeframe. So it's going to be a, a couple of really busy years uh, for the EVA community. And that is 
all we have time for today, but thank you, Laura, for joining us. Again, Laura Kearney is the program manager for the newly created Extravehicular Activity and Human Surface Mobility Program. Thanks, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. All righty, and we'll end our coverage here. This is Mission Control Houston. With the completion of today's test, all the success, we have some updated statistics. Today, the 247th Spacewalk and Support Device has assembly, maintenance, and upgrades completed. Second Spacewalk of 2022. This was the third Spacewalk during Expedition 66. This was the second Spacewalk for Kayla Barron, EV-1, totaling 13 hours and 26 minutes. This was the first Spacewalk for Rasha Chari, EV-2, totaling six hours and 54 minutes. And the total spacewalk time over the ISS has been 1,562 hours and 31 minutes, which is the equivalent of 65 days, one hour and 31 minutes. With three spacewalks, Expedition 66 total time has been 20 hours and 37 minutes.